What is 240p? For most gamers, it is simply assumed to be a low resolution that was used for older games. While this is true, the resolution and how it was displayed is a much more complicated answer. It was used at a time when consumers had CRT televisions, devices designed for an interlaced video signal. So perhaps the true questions are, how does 240p work, and why 240p? Let's jump back in time to the early days of film and work our way forward to 240p with an emphasis on the display rather than the game console or computer. When we see a series of static images in rapid succession, we experience an illusion of motion. This is known as the Phi Phenomenon. A notable example of this would be movies, or to use the alternate, more formal term, motion pictures. In film, pictures are rapidly projected onto a screen at a theater. There is a misconception that film is a large number of pictures simply pulled really fast past the projector's light source. In reality, the projector makes use of a shutter that blocks the projection while the film changes to the next picture. In order for this change in picture to take place without us perceiving it, perceiving flicker, as it is called, the change has to happen at a fast enough speed. The necessary speed of the change, or refresh rate, of those images for a dark movie theater environment was decided to be 48 hertz, that is, 48 frames per second. As this would cost a large amount of money due to needing 48 shots per second on film, the decision was made instead to shoot film at half the speed, at 24 frames per second, and flash each frame twice during projection in order to achieve the necessary refresh rate of 48 hertz. When television came into being, the refresh rate was decided to be the same as the power line frequency. The AC power in your home has a frequency at which an oscillating current arrives when it is transferred from the power station to your home. This frequency is either 50 Hz or 60 Hz, depending on where you live in the world. As I live in the United States, this frequency is 60 Hz. From this point, my numbers will come from a US point of view, but the fundamentals are the same no matter where you live. In addition to the refresh rate used for the image, there was the makeup of the image itself. What resolution would it be? How quickly could a vacuum tube CRT television draw to the screen? And how fast could the picture be transmitted and received by the TV? What about the idea of showing a frame twice? RAM didn't exist back then to store an image. During the evolution of early television, a technique known as interlacing was used in order for the CRT TVs to draw an image down the screen at a fast enough rate for the desired refresh. Although technology continued to improve from the 1920s to the early 1940s, at some point it needed to be standardized for broadcasting. In the case of the United States, this happened on May the 2nd, 1941. 525 scan lines at 30 frames per second with interlaced scanning. With an interlaced signal, each frame would be made up of two fields. Of the 525 scan lines, about 483 made up the visible image on the TV screen. Today, we call this 480i, 60 Hz refresh rate, so 60 fields per second. The standards would be amended in the 1950s for the addition of NTSC color. Finally, we reach the late 70s and early 80s. Computers and video game consoles are arriving in the home. They would be hooked up to CRT TVs that have used the same resolution and refresh rate for decades. So how would they use that display? First, let's look at how the CRT shows an image on the screen. The electron beam inside a CRT scans the first field down the screen line by line, returns to the top, offsets the starting position, and scans the second field, producing an interlaced image. This short loop shows a person walking toward us on a CRT television. This footage was shot at 1,000 frames per second, so let's slow it down to see the scanning. The phosphors on the CRT screen hold each scan field for a very short amount of time and quickly start fading away as the next field is drawn. Fortunately, the glow time of the phosphors and the speed at which each field is drawn is enough to reduce flicker to an acceptable level. So once again, now that we've reached the late 70s, how does a computer or console produce output for a 480 line, 60 Hz interlaced display? To cut costs and produce a flicker-free display, a lower resolution was necessary. But how would a lower resolution work with 480 lines interlaced? 
The solution was simple and crafty. Use half the resolution, 240 lines, and always apply the command to draw the first field. Since the same lines updated with each refresh, the image was now progressive. Fields were now frames, and the systems had the opportunity to take advantage of the 60 frames per second video output and update their graphics at the same speed. At the time, this progressive scan piggyback of sorts was referred to as non-interlaced. Nintendo would eventually call it double strike, as it was striking, so to speak, the same scan line area rather than alternating their starting point like in an interlaced signal. Today, we call it 240p. With the second set of scan line positions not filled on the display, any gaps between the scan lines would be a bit more pronounced with this low resolution. This is why some people desire simulating this look when they upscale their old games on a fixed pixel display. In a bit of irony, people refer to the addition of black lines to their fixed pixel display as scan lines. Perhaps scan line effect would be a more appropriate term, but either way, trying to obtain that look of 240p on a CRT is why scan lines are often a desired option on fixed pixel displays. I hope you enjoyed this video on the how and why of 240p. I left out a lot of technical specifics for the sake of flow. There are some really good books out there that do a great job explaining signals as well as the history of television if you are interested in learning more. Thanks for watching.